Hello and welcome to the Ghosts and Folklore podcast. I'm Mark Rees, and on each episode, I investigate a different, weird, and wonderful subject. And on this episode, we are going in search of paranormal activity inside one of Wales's most haunted manor houses. In fact, the National Trust call it their most haunted location in all of Wales and their fourth most haunted place in all of the United Kingdom. And that is Newton House in Deneva, in the town of Llandilo, in the county of Carmarthenshire. And this is something of a special episode because I did not plan on talking to you about Newton House this week, but after a recent visit when so much supposedly ghostly activity took place, I just had to record this episode straight afterwards. So, to begin at the beginning, a very good friend of mine called Ronnie who you might know if you've been to any of my events. She joins in. She leads the amazing Lotus Sisters Spooky Belly Dancing Group. And she's also a tour guide at Newton House. And she knows a heck of a lot about the supposedly ghostly goings-on which take place there after dark. And as I was researching my most recent book, Paranormal Wales, Ronnie is the person I turn to for help with spooky accounts relating to Newton House. And she told me quite a few which had never been published anywhere ever before. Now, a few days before Halloween this year, Ronnie dropped me a message to say that she had some even newer accounts of spooky activity at the house, which nobody had heard before. And also, she was planning on running some nighttime ghost tours in the building, telling people scary stories, including these new accounts, as they wandered around from room to room. And if I wanted, I was welcome to join them. So, I decided to pop along on Halloween itself, the third of three nights, the final night, and... Before it even started, Ronnie took me to one side and said that some unexpected things had happened on the previous two nights. Things that people on the tour believed were paranormal in nature. And without wanting to freak out any of the people who had booked for that night, because, you know, there were about two dozen members of the paying public there as well, she did tell me off the record beforehand, she fully expected some strange things to happen again that night, especially as it was Halloween, Norse Kalan Gaiav. If anything was going to happen, you would imagine it would happen on Halloween. And I just happened to be there as well, recording the whole thing. And I'm sure you can see where this is going. But yes, things did indeed kick off a little bit. And here's a little taster of the kind of things that happened on that night. I do believe that people, if we're talking about them, they want us to know that they're here. You know, if you were, if you were... And yes, that was a very, very short sample because there was a lot of screaming, a lot of jumping about, and a lot of colourful language, shall we say, that I now have to edit out and beep because this is a family-friendly podcast. Although why you'd want your kids to listen to this is beyond me, but but yes, it is family-friendly. And it was a very busy night from a paranormal point of view. And if you believe it was genuine, and I am not saying it was or it wasn't, But if you choose to believe that it was genuine, and many of the people on the tour did so, then in all of my long years walking around cold, dark, empty buildings, it was one of the most successful. So that's why I'm talking to you about Newton House on this episode. But there's no point me just playing you a ghost hunt 
with people running around screaming and swearing or, or bleeping <laughs> after I've edited it. But there's no point me just playing that to you without first explaining the history of the house and the history of the hauntings which are said to be associated with it. And so, for the first time ever on the Ghosts and Folklore podcast, I've got so much to squeeze in, this is going to be a two-part episode. And on this episode, I am going to tell you all of the cool history, all of the cool folklore and ghost stories attached to the location. And then on the next episode, I will play you the ghost tour itself. And so, without further ado, let us now take a look at the history of Newton House. And all of the quotes from this episode come courtesy of my latest book, Paranormal Wales, which makes a nice change because usually on this podcast, I am quoting some dusty old tome of 18th century folklore. But on this episode, I am quoting some bloke, some some hack called Mark Rees. And so, in the history of Newton House, or Deneva, as the National Trust like to call it, which is the name of the estate on which the house stands, Newton House in Deneva Estate. And it's somewhere I know quite well. It's somewhere I've spent a lot of time visiting over the years. I've been there in the daytime in my role as a journalist covering events and literary festivals and things. And I've also been there after dark. I've spent some time there looking for ghosts in the past, like on an overnight paranormal investigation with my good friends, Cymru Paranormal, who were with me on the last episode of this podcast. And in all of this time, I have yet to experience anything there that you might describe as scary or spooky or paranormal in any sense until Halloween this year. Now, the house itself is a grade two listed Jacobean house, which was given a gothic makeover in the 19th century, which really does add to the spooky feel of the building as you approach it. And it stands tall in the heart of Deneva Park, as mentioned on the Deneva estate. And the park is a medieval deer park, which has been occupied for some 2,000 years now, so it's a very picturesque, sublime-looking landscape. It's the kind of place I would recommend doing a quick internet search for and having a look to get a feel for the place. And as well as the house, there's also a Grade 1 listed castle on the estate. It's a, it's a pretty big estate, but there's Deneva Castle, which is managed by Cadu, not the National Trust. And I am sure I will talk about the castle in more detail in the future. And there's also a church there. And of course, there is the mythical White Park cattle there. The, these really do exist, again, if you want to do a quick image search for them. But there are mythical cows, mythical cattle on the estate. And they are said to have grazed Carmarthenshire grass since the year 920. 920. And some believe they have a connection with the Welsh fairy folk, a Tulloth Tig, because according to the legend of the Lady of the Lake, who is said to have emerged from nearby Llyn Avan Vach in the Black Mountain, the cattle were part of her dowry in her marriage to a local farmer. And that is a very famous Welsh fairy tale, if not the most famous Welsh fairy tale. And I am sure the Lady of the Lake from Llyna Van Vach is going to crop up quite a lot on this podcast. But for the purposes of this episode, all you need to know is that the white cows which are wandering around Newton House are said to have emerged from the lake with her when she married a local farmer. But back to the house itself, and inside Newton House is what I describe as a magical labyrinth of big, grand rooms, finely decorated and connected with what what feel like secret hallways, much like you'd expect, I guess, from a big, fancy National Trust property. But 
As with all the best attractions like this, there are plenty of eerie little features that you might not notice on first glance, but once they're pointed out to you, really change the feel of the place. And there's one in particular that I love in one of the rooms which Ronnie told me about a few years ago, and it's quite grim and quite fascinating at the same time. But she pointed out on a previous ghost tour, a daytime one a few years ago, that under the floorboards in one particular room, there is a mummified cat. Yes, a mummified cat that you can see under the floorboards in a room in this National Trust property. And this mummified cat is facing east. And the reason for that is because, as all superstitious people will know, if you want to protect your house from the forces of evil, from spirits and witches and whatever else might be lurking out there in the darkness, you can put a cat in the floorboards facing east to protect yourself. And does it work? Well, personally, I've, I've never tried it. It's, it's not the kind of thing I'd like to try. But Ronnie did say on the most recent visit that while things were going a bit bonkers in some of the other rooms, the room with the mummified cat in is the one room in the house where nothing is reported. So maybe, maybe there is some truth in it. I'll never know because I will never try it myself. Now, Talking about these ghosts, let's let's look at the ghosts themselves. And there has been reports of ghostly activity at the property for a long time. These are not just dusty old legends. There are some legends, but some of these reports are bang up to date. And they've been seen by the staff and the visitors who go there nowadays. And the most common phenomena is the sounds of, to quote, muffled men's voices which I heard when people are alone in the rooms. Throughout the house, people can hear men talking. There's also reports of lights being switched on and off, and this occurs even when the building is locked up for the day and there is nobody inside to do so. And possibly the most commonly reported phenomena is that of the lingering smell of cigar smoke. Maybe pipe smoke, but probably cigar smoke. And this has been connected to the ghost of a man who is also seen on a regular basis and who is also known to have been a keen smoker, a keen cigar smoker. And that is the property's last aristocratic owner, a man called Walter Rice or Walter Rice. And he was the seventh Baron de Neve. And by all accounts, the best time to catch a whiff of his tobacco is by standing next to his portrait on a Sunday. Although I do have some bad news on that front, because when I was there a few days ago, where his portrait used to hang, it has now been replaced by a work of modern art. And it's a, it's a lovely work of modern art, but I don't know if the ghost of Walter still hangs around in that place and whether or not it'll have the same effect. Now, a few years ago, Ronnie told me of one of her personal experiences there, and this took place again when the building was closed to the public, and she just happened to look up and noticed on the top floor that the windows in one of the rooms opened by themselves. Now, she went back into the house and back upstairs to close them, but when she returned back outside again and looked up, they were wide open once more. Now, these windows are in the former children's quarter, and we will investigate those on our ghost hunt. And a legend attached to them might lend a clue as to the culprit's identity, as to who was opening these windows, because... According to legend, it is said that in the 1720s, a Lady Ellen Cavendish, a relation of the Lady of Deneva, was being pursued by a suitor, by a fiancé, that she was being forced into marrying. Now, she was trying to escape from him, and she sought refuge in Deneva, in Newton House. But 
unfortunately, it proved to be anything but a safe haven because he just followed her. And when he arrived to reclaim her, she fled upstairs to hide in the nursery. Now, it didn't take him long to find her. And when he did, one heck of an argument broke out. And in a fit of rage, he is said to have strangled her to death. Since then, visitors have reported a sudden drop in temperature as they enter the nursery, as well as an icy chill in the corner of the room, which is where she is said to have been murdered. Other reports include the feeling of hands being placed around the neck, while sightings of a white lady in the area have been attributed to her spirit. And maybe it is this white lady who likes to open the windows and let the fresh air inside. Now, I mentioned this was the children's quarter, and the ghosts of children have also been seen and are said to haunt the property, not just in this area, but throughout the house. And there's one eerie little detail, which again, Ronnie pointed out to me some time ago, and I'll share a photo of this on social media if you'd like to see it, but the stairs in the house, very grand winding stairs which go right up to the top, are lined with family portraits, as you'd expect in any old creepy posh manor house. And at the top on the first floor, there is a big portrait showing three young children in a normal enough portrait in the style of the period it was painted in. But if you look closely, you'll notice that the children are quite spaced out, almost like they are social distancing hundreds of years ago, back when they didn't have to social distance. And it has been suggested that the reason for that is because the black gaps in between the three children is where two other children have been painted out Two children who died in infancy and have now been wiped out of history. And maybe, if indeed there are children haunting this manor house, is it one or both of these two forgotten children who are reminding us that, yes, at one point in the past, they did indeed exist? And if that wasn't enough, there's more. There's also spooky activity which is concentrated on the downstairs area and the servants' area. And one of the ghosts still thought to be hard at work in an area which leads from the kitchen to where the food was delivered is the faithful butler. And so I think after all of that, from smoking rich people to, to ghostly white ladies to playful forgotten children to butlers who can't stop working, you can probably see why this house has got a reputation for being one of the most haunted places, not just in Wales, but in the UK, and who knows, maybe, maybe in the world. Most places are happy to have one famous ghost. Newton House has got a whole gamut to choose from. And that is where I spent my Halloween ghost hunting this year. And after listening to all of those accounts, I'm sure you can appreciate why this is going to be the first ever two-part episode. And to hear all about that terrifying ghost hunt in Newton House, be sure to tune in to the next episode. And as always, if you don't want to miss that episode and get it as soon as I publish it, then please consider hitting the subscribe button and you'll never miss an episode ever. If you really enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, you can now treat me to a coffee via the website, which helps cover hosting costs and things. Or you can just leave a nice review or give it a quick thumbs up or five stars or whatever the option is on whatever platform you are consuming this on. And finally, if you'd like more ghosts and folklore, you can follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, and I'm on Instagram. And as well as this podcast, I've also written a number of books, including 
Paranormal Wales, where you can read all about the ghosts of Newton House, as discussed on this episode, and which is available from all good bookshops, offline and on. And on that note, it just leaves me to say thank you very much for listening. Dioch and Varian Amarando. I've been Mark Rees. This has been my Ghosts and Folklore podcast beaming to you from Wales to the world. Until next time, no star. Thank you.